Governor uh, Romney, uh, you've said that Governor Perry's position on Social Security is, quote, unacceptable and could even obliterate the Republican Party. Uh, are you saying he could not, as Republican nominee, beat Barack Obama? No, what I'm saying is that what he just said, I think most people agree with, although the term Ponzi scheme, I think, is over the top and unnecessary and frightful to many people. But the real issue is that in writing his book, Governor Perry pointed out that in his view, that Social Security is unconstitutional, that this is not something the federal government ought to be involved in, that instead it should be given back to the states. And I think that view, and, and the view that somehow Social Security has been forced on us over the past 70 years, that by any measure, again, quoting from his book, by any measure, Social Security has been a failure. This is after 70 years of tens of millions of people relying on Social Security. That's a very different matter. So the financing of Social Security, we've all talked about at great length. In the last campaign, four years around, John McCain said it was bankrupt. I put in my book a series of proposals as to how to get it on sound financial footing so that our kids can count on it, not just our current seniors. But the real question is, does, does Governor Perry continue to believe that Social Security should not be a federal program, that it's unconstitutional, and it should be returned to the states? Oh. Or is he going to retreat from that view? But the, but the question is, do you still believe that Social Security should be ended as a federal program, as you did six months ago, when your book came out, and returned to the states? Or do you want to retreat from that? I, I think we ought to have a conversation. Uh, we're having with, that right now, Governor. This, yes, we're, sir, that's, we're finish, running for president. I'll, I'll finish this conversation. Governor, the term Ponzi scheme is what scared seniors, number one. And number two, suggesting that Social Security should no longer be a federal program and return to the states and unconstitutional is likewise frightening. Look, there are a lot of very bright people who agree with you. And, and that's your view. I happen to have a different one. I think that Social Security is an essential program that we should change the way we're Governor, funding it to make it sure... To make sure you said if people did it in the private sector, did, did it what? would be called criminal. That's in your book. Yeah, what I said was... <laughs> Gov Governor Perry, you got to quote me correctly. You said it's criminal. What I said was Congress taking money out of the Social Security Trust Fund is like criminal, and that is, and it's wrong. Romney, what about you? No, I, would, I wouldn't repeal it. I'd reform Medicare and reform Medicaid and reform Social Security to get them on a sustainable basis, not for current retirees, but for those in their 20s and 30s and early 50s. But the key to balancing the budget, and we, and we talk about all the waste in government and the inefficiency, and having spent 25 years in business, I know something about taking waste out of enterprises. I'd love to do that to the federal government. And there is massive waste. But we're not going to balance the budget just by pretending that all they, all they have to do is take out the waste. We're going to have to cut spending. And I'm in favor of cutting spending, capping federal spending as a percentage of GDP at 20% or less, and having a balanced budget amendment. That's essential to rein in the scale of the federal government. And there's a second part to balancing the budget, and that's growing the economy again. And that's why I laid out a plan to restructure the foundation of America's economy to start creating jobs again so people are paying taxes, businesses are paying taxes, not because we're raising the rates, but because we're growing the economy. The right answer for America is to stop the growth of the federal government and to start the growth of the private sector. Governor Romney, is there anything you disagree with uh, with, with Governor Perry on that point? Uh, well, my own view is that, quite simply, that the Federal Reserve has a responsibility to preserve the value of our currency, to have a strong American currency such that investors and people who are thinking about bringing enterprises to this country have confidence in the future of America and in our currency. People will not invest in this country and create jobs in this country for the American people if they don't have belief in our currency. Of course we should see what the Fed is doing. There should be some oversight to make sure that it's, be, that it's uh, acting properly. Uh, but at the same time, we recognize that we need to have a Fed. Why, why do I say that? Because if we don't have a Fed, who's going to run the currency? Congress? I'm not in favor of that. I'd rather have an agency that is being overseen rather than have the United States Congress try and manage our currency. Hello, my question is, would any of you be willing to support the fair tax? Uh, Governor Romney, <clears throat> a fair tax basically is a national sales tax. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the idea of a national sales tax or a consumption tax has a lot to go for it. One, it would make us more competitive globally as we sent products around the world because under the provisions of the World Trade Organization, you can reimburse that to an exporter. We can't reimburse our taxes right now. It also would level the playing field in the country, making sure everybody's paying some part of their fair share. But the way the fair tax has been structured, it has a real problem. And that is it lowers the burden on the very highest income folks and the very lowest income folks and raises on middle income.
people. And the people that have been hurt most by the Obama economy are the middle class. And so my plan is to take the middle class individuals and dramatically reduce their taxes by the following measure. And that is for middle income Americans, no tax on interest, dividends, or capital gains. Let people save their money as the way they think that is best for them, for their kids, for their future, for the retirement. We're taxing too much, we're spending too much, and middle income Americans need a break, and I'll give it to them. Governor Romney, a lot of the Tea Party uh, supporters here and around the country have a real serious problem with the health care mandate that you got through in, in Massachusetts. Is there anything you want to say to them to revise or amend? Do you stand by what you did? Absolutely. And let me, let me come back and just mention something that Her Herman Cain is right. And let's come back to this getting the cost of health care down. I happen to think that's an enormous issue. And, and, and I agree with almost everything you said, Herman. But the reason health care is so expensive, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. He said it's not just because of insurance, it's because of the cost of providing care. And one reason for that is the person who receives care in America generally doesn't care how much it costs. Because once they've paid their deductible, it's free. And the provider, the more they do, the more they get paid. We have something that's not working like a market. It's working like a government utility. And so what we have to do is make sure that individuals have a concern and care about how much something costs. And for that to happen, health savings accounts. Give people a stake in what the cost of insurance is going to be, what the cost of care is going to be. Co-insurance, where people pay a share of the, of the bill, that makes a difference. And with regards to Massachusetts care, I'm not running for governor, I'm running for president. And if I'm president, on day one, I'll direct the Secretary of Health and Human Services to grant a waiver from Obamacare to all 50 states. It's a problem, it's bad law, it's unconstitutional, I'll get rid of it. All right, uh, I'm going to let you respond, but I want uh, uh, well, uh, Governor Romney to respond first. First, I'd be careful about trusting what President Obama says, all right, as to what the uh, source was of his plan, number one. But number two, if you think what we did in Massachusetts and what President Obama did are the same, boy, take a closer look. Because number one, he raised taxes $500 billion and helped slow down the U.S. economy by doing it. We didn't raise taxes. He cut Medicare by $500 billion. This, the Democrat president, the liberal, so to speak, cut Medicare, not Republicans, the Democrat. We dealt with the people in our state that were uninsured, some 9%. His bill deals with 100% of the people. He puts in place a panel that ultimately is going to tell people what kind of care they can have. We didn't do anything like that. What the president did was simply wrong. It is the wrong course for America. It is not what we did in Massachusetts. The people of Massachusetts favor our plan to buy three to one. And states can make their own choices. All right. I'm happy to stand up for what we did. But I'll tell you one thing, what he did is wrong for America, and I'll stop it. Governor Romney, you have a problem with either what Governor Huntsman did in Utah or Governor Perry did in Texas. Yeah, with both, actually. Uh, the question began by saying, how do we attract Latino voters? And the answer is by telling, telling them what they know in their heart, which is they or their ancestors did not come here for a handout. If they came for a handout, they'd be voting for Democrats. They came here for opportunity and freedom, and that's what we represent, and that's why we'll win in, in, in collecting uh, support from, from Latinos across the country. And with regards to illegal immigration, of course we build a fence. And of course we do not give in-state tuition credits to people who've come here illegally. That only attracts people to continue to come here and take advantage of America's uh, great uh, beneficence. And with regards to giving driver's licenses to people that are here illegally, again, that creates a patina of legal, legal status. There's sanctuary cities in some parts of the country. Uh, one of the things I did in my state was to say, look, I'm going to get my state police authorized to be able to enforce immigration laws and make sure those people who we arrest or put in jail that find out they're here illegally, we're going to get them out of here. We, we have to recognize that this is the party that believes in supporting the law. We're going to enforce the law. We are the party of opportunity. We're also the party of le legal law-abiding citizens, and that's something we're going to attract with people of all, of all backgrounds. Respond. Go ahead. Governor Romney, you know Governor Perry, as governor of Texas, created more jobs in Texas than any other state. Terrific state. No question about that. Some wonderful things that Texas has going for it that the nation could learn from. Zero income tax. That's a pretty, pretty good thing. Right to work state. Republican legislature. Republican Supreme Court. By the way, a lot of oil as well. We're an energy rich nation. We're living like an energy poor nation. I spent my life in the private sector. I've competed with companies around the world. I've learned something about how it is that economies grow. It's not just a simple a wave a wand and everything gets better. No, you have to make some structural changes. The world has changed. 
What's happened over the last 20, 30 years is we've gone from a payphone world to a smartphone world. And President Obama keeps jamming quarters into the payphone thinking things are going to get better. It's not connected, Mr. President. And so if we're going to get this economy going, we've got seven things we've got to do. One, make our tax code competitive with the world. Two, get regulations to work to encourage enterprise. Three, to make sure we have trade policies that work for us, not just for the other guys. Four, is to have energy security in this country by develop, developing our energy resources. Five, is to execute the rule of law, which is to stop the Boeing decision that the NLRB put in place. Six, is to make sure that we have institutions that create fantastic human capital. And finally, number seven, is to balance the budget. People won't invest here unless they have confidence so, here. So, and that's what I'll do. Just to get back to the question, so does, does Governor Perry deserve any credit for all those jobs that were created in Texas? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Go ahead and tell him how much credit he deserves. Well, <laughs> yeah. well look, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think Governor Perry would agree with me that if you dealt four aces, that doesn't make you necessarily a great poker player. And, and, and four aces, and the four aces that are terrific aces the nation should learn from were the ones I described. Zero income tax, low regulation, a right to work state, oil in the ground, and a Republican legislature. Those things are terrific. And by the way, there has been great job growth in Texas. Under Ann Richards, job growth was 2.5% a year. Under George Bush, was 3% a year. Under Rick Perry, it's been 1% a year. Those are all good numbers. Those are all good numbers. But Texas is a great state. And I'll tell you, if you think that the country is like Texas, going swimmingly well, then somebody who's done that is just terrific. But if you think the country needs a turnaround, that's what I do.